to have a savior to lift you up. To have a savior to wrap his arms around you. To have a savior that says, I held every tear. <laughs> to have a savior that you're all in all. To have a savior that doesn't sleep, that's not too busy. Oh, how lucky we are. Not lucky. I apologize for that word. How blessed. How blessed we are. And yes, he's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. And by you coming here tonight, even if you didn't sing, you still gave him praise because you did, could have been somewhere else. But you came. Okay. Let's see if I can talk about this. <laughs> no. It's great to be with family. <laughs> the title of the sermon is uh, The True You. You know, when you grow up, especially when you're younger, those in authority over you, they tell you things about you. And because you believe that they know so much, that becomes your identity. That becomes who you are. And then when you're around kids at school, whatever they may say about you, that becomes your identity. That's who you are. And then when you start to date whatever that person says about you, well, that becomes who you are, and you get kind of lost in the mix, and you say, I don't even know who I am. And even sometimes if we can figure out, and we think we know us, have you or had somebody say, man, I never thought I would do something like that. I can't believe those words came out of my mouth. Or to say, I can't believe I actually accomplished that. I didn't think I had that in me. Sometimes we even surprise ourselves. So sometimes we don't even know who we are. But the Bible says that God knows who we are. Why does he know who we are? Well, because he manufactured us. He designed us. He knows better than anybody who we are. See, everything that was ever said about you or everything that you thought about you or everything the enemy said about you, those were just opinions. And it's just because it's an opinion, it doesn't make it true about you. The only one that has the truth is the one that created you. Everything else, it's just somebody's opinion. If you listen to the world's truth, it changes. Even in our history books, in our science books, it will change. At one time they said this is a fact, it is so true, you can count on it. And then a few years later, they're like, oops, we made a discovery. Guess what? That's not true anymore. And then when your truth is different than my truth, and my truth is different than your truth, and your children's truth is sometimes different than your truth, because at times they might say, you don't even love me. You don't love me. And at that moment, that's their truth. Even though your truth is, I would lay down my life for you. But see, they see a different truth. So truth changes, and culture and society will tell us what is true, what we should all believe. And if we're not careful, our minds just spin because we don't know what the truth is. But the Bible says that Jesus, he's the truth. And what was wonderful, I want to read in John 8 and 32. Here is what the Bible says, Jesus talking, and he says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth will do what? It will set you free. When you finally know who you are in Christ, you have freedom to be who you were created to be. So God, he is the truth, and Jesus said that that truth, that truth is what is going to set you free. I am the truth. It's important to discover what's true about us, and Jesus came to tell us what's true about us. Yes, he came to tell us about God, 
He came to tell us about salvation, but see, the connection between us and God was broken. So Jesus came to remind us who we are. Because at that time, and even now, the world was confused. The world was broken. We had a broken relationship, and we had guilt, and we had sin upon us. And that's who we believed we were. We were guilty, we were sinners, we were worthless, and we didn't deserve unconditional love. But Jesus said, that's why I have to come. See, in the Bible, it says that everything was created by Jesus and through Jesus. So for this instant, God couldn't just send a messenger like he did to Mary or like he did to others because they weren't the ones that created you. See, he couldn't leave that message to anybody else. So the source of who created you and me came to the earth to tell you who you were, the truth about you. Jesus says that if you follow me, I'm going to show you. Why? Because Jesus says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. So he says, if you follow me, I will show you the truth about who God is and who you are, because I'm the truth. And if you follow me, I'll show you the way to eternal life, because I am the way. So in other words, truth, what is it equal? Freedom. Freedom from depression, freedom from guilt, freedom from confusion, freedom from sin, freedom from panic attacks, freedom from low self-esteem, free to be who you are in God. See, God not only designed us, but he knows about us. And God has blessings and opportunities and talents that he designed just for you. But if we don't know that, then we live way below our privilege. I don't want to live in spiritual poverty I don't want to have spiritual food stamps when I was designed to live like royalty. But for us to walk in God's truth, we have to walk by faith, not feeling. Because he can tell us who we are in the Bible, in his word, and the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. He can only speak truth. And in the Bible, it tells us so many things about who we are in Christ that we are overcomers, that we are victorious, that we are precious, that we were created before the foundations of the earth, that we can do all things in this world through him. In fact, he says you can even do greater things than I did when I was on this earth. But if we don't know what the Bible says, we're walking around thinking we are useless and we are nobody because that's how we feel. But feelings are not faith. And in fact, facts aren't even faith because your eyes will lie to you what you see and you say, well, that's a fact. But what does faith say about that situation? It may be a fact. You may be broke. The doctor may said, there is no hope, but what does faith say? See, we have to live off of faith, not our feelings. It's important to believe the truth about ourself and about our life. Believe what God says, not what you see. Your eyes are going to lie to you. People will lie to you. Your own self will lie to you, and certainly the enemy is going to lie to you, but God never will. Our prayer should be, God, show me who I am in you. God, what do you see when you look at me? What he sees is he sees a masterpiece. And if you're a believer, that means you have the Holy Spirit. And when he sees you, he sees himself. He sees his son. That's who he sees when he looks at you. But we believed lies and said that we're not good enough and God is angry at us. And that is not true. There's certain things that people will say about you, and if we're not careful, it's going to put us in a prison 
and it's going to help us become less than what we should be. But God's truth, that's the one that will set you free. The short example I want to use tonight is at one point Paul found himself in prison. And instead of crying and complaining, he began to sing. But here's the reason why he began to sing. Fact was, he was in prison. Feelings could have been, this really stinks. I'm out here doing God's work. He had every right to get bitter. But he lived by faith. And he remembered what Jesus said. And Jesus said that he would preach to kings and people. He had preached to people. He hadn't preached to kings yet. So he didn't worry about dying because he knew it wasn't his time to die because it didn't happen yet what Jesus said because he had faith. Find out what God says about you and your situation. And then that's when you can even sing in the presence of your storm. Ask God, show me who you are. If you know what God says about you and they don't agree, it's just an opinion. And when you know who you are in Christ, it can just roll off your back. It's like, you know what, that may be your truth, but that's not my truth. I know who I am in God, and I'm a child of God. I'm not even only a child of God. I talked this morning that you can also be a friend of God. I told God, I don't want to just be a good, good daughter. I want to be a good, good friend. And see, nobody can now convince me that God doesn't love me. But if you're told all your life that you're not lovable, you if you don't know the word, if you haven't received the truth, you're going to agree with them. And you're always going to feel like you have to earn God's love. You can't earn what you already have. God is in your life. He is nothing but love. That's all he knows to do. Even when he has to correct, the foundation is still love. See, so that's just their opinion. And you can just say to yourself, you don't know who I am, do you? Because that's the enemy's favorite weapon to use is the mouth of the ignorant. Sometimes they don't even know what they're saying, but the enemy has put those words in them. You just keep fulfilling God's purpose for you. Why? Because he set you free. <laughs> See, when you know who you are in Christ, you're not going to have to take a pill because you're depressed. So you're depressed because you feel like you have no hope. And you kind of question who you are. When you start to know who you are in Christ, you're not going to have to worry with depression anymore. Because how can you be depressed when you know that the creator of the universe holds you in his hands? When the creator, creator of the universe is going to go through every trial and storm with you, and at the end of it he has a blessing, how can you be discouraged? How can you be discouraged when you know that he loved you so much that he laid down his life for you? That's love. When you know who you are in Christ, you won't struggle with the things that you already struggle with. You won't struggle with anxiety and worry and panic attacks. You have the panic attacks because you forget and you think that you have to bear it all on your shoulders. But Jesus said, come to me. You're tired? Come to me, I got you. You're weary? Come to me. I can handle this. I never meant for you to carry all those burdens. I meant for you to give them to me. Then you won't struggle with depression because you know the truth. And that's what sets you free. Because of the truth, here's a few of the truths if you don't know all of them tonight. In closing, truth is, you were made in God's image. God said, I want somebody just like me. I'm not talking about you can speak the world into an existence. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the emotions, the love, the compassion, the joy, the laughter, the happiness. He says, I want him, I want him just like me. He could have chose to make you like all kinds of different things, but he said, no, 
I want you to be just like me. I want you to be so close that we have so many things in common that we already have a connection before you even take your first breath. I want you to be just like me. When you're a parent, how wonderful it is when you see a child kind of liking what you do so much that they kind of follow in the same footsteps. Don't you know how proud your Heavenly Father is when he sees you acting like the characteristics that he has? When he sees you loving one another, praying for one another, lifting one another up, reaching out and comforting another one, don't you know how he swells of pride? And he's like, that's, that's my child. God could have made you like anybody, but he said, no, I want, I want them to be so close to me. I want them to be like me. So you were made with love. And you were made on purpose for a purpose. See, you're a child of the king. You're a co-inheritant of the kingdom with Jesus. Can you believe that? Can you believe that one day it says that we will rule and reign with him? I didn't die on a cross. I didn't deserve that. But because of God's love, that's how much you are loved. It says that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. In other words, we don't have to do it on our own. That's something to celebrate. Christ made us he died for us. He saved us to set us free. I didn't come with a long sermon tonight. I kind of filled your head up this morning to give you something to think about. Tonight, I just kind of wanted to top it off a little bit with letting you know how valuable you are, how loved you are, and what the truth is about you. So if you've struggled for so long with a low self-esteem or just feeling like a failure, I want you to realize that's not your Heavenly Father. He didn't come to beat you up. He came to lift you up. So you just let that roll off. You just say, you know what? That's just your opinion. But that's not truth. The truth is what will set you free. And I think that is a day to celebrate. And so I asked for closing that the song that we're going to sing is, Oh, Happy Day. So let's, let's rock it tonight. Let's go out of here tonight. Proud of who you are. Fall in love with yourself. Become your best friend, your biggest cheerleader, because the truth is God loves you. God's given you everything that you need, and now the enemy is going to run, and I like that. God bless you.